2020 candidate Mike Gravel is one Democrat not courting voters on the trail. The former senator from Alaska has also not qualified for the debates, but he does have experience on that stage. Here he is in a 2008 debate when he ran for president. It's like going into the Senate. You know, the first time you get there, you're all excited. My God, how did I ever get here? Then about six months later, you say, how the hell did the rest of them get here? <laughs> no. They frighten me. When, when you have mainline candidates that turn around and say that there's nothing off the table with respect to Iran, that's code for using nukes, nuclear devices. Who on this stage exactly tonight uh, uh, worries you uh, so much? Well, I would say the top tier ones. The top tier ones. They made statements. Oh, Joe, I'll include you too. You have a certain arrogance. You want to you tell the Iraqis how to run their country. I got to tell you, we should just play get out. Earlier, my colleague Tanya Rivero spoke with Gravel about his latest bid. He said while his campaign is serious, he's not necessarily looking for the nomination. So a New York Times piece from this month describes your candidacy as follows. It wasn't exactly a bid for the presidency, but neither was it really a joke or a prank, rather. What do you make of that? Well, I think it's accurate. Uh, the reporter did an excellent job in in realizing that the issue was instigated by these young teenagers uh, and that when I gave, when I finally succumbed to their pressures, uh, I gave them access to the Twitter and they gave me a veto power, which I've only exercised once uh, by uh, warning them about uh, rough language. But other than that, it's been their show and I've just responded to interviews on the subject. Uh, and they're they're unbelievably precocious. You're you're talking about a 17 year old and an 18 year old uh, that have been handling that thought this thing out and were able to uh, address what I felt was most important: the creation of a legislature of the people. And so they put that topped on their list. And of course, that's what floats my vote, my vote. And so that's why I agreed to give them uh, the reins to the campaign. So uh, let's talk a little bit then more about that, about how your campaign is being run. It, it is considered pretty unconventional. You just mentioned you have these two teenagers leading the charge. There are viral memes about you. Why do you feel this is an effective approach to politics? And who exactly are you targeting? Well, the reason why it is effective is that uh, they are, and of course I have been for some time addressing issues that are vital to the success of our country. And so this, uh, and of course there's a lot of people running for political office, presidency at this point, but a good many of them are empty shirts and, and really don't address, uh, in fact there's only one in uh, Bernie to a degree, but uh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard is the only one that I know that has taken on the military industrial complex, which has been robbing our treasure. And so when you when you look at uh, what's going on in this regard, you, you have to come away and say, well, don't these people understand that this is the 500 pound gorilla that's in our, in our office and nobody's mentioning it except Tulsi and Bernie. All right, so, so I'm glad you brought up Bernie, because I just want to ask you quickly uh, about him and his platform, because you ran for president during the 2008 election, and a lot of the ideals you embraced then are echoed now by Senator Sanders, especially your stance against foreign intervention. Let's talk a little bit about progressive ideals and whether you think they are being embraced today by the party as a whole in a way they weren't when you last ran for president. No, they're not being embraced today by the party as a whole. In fact, the, the, the tug of war is still on. What, what happened with the Clintons uh, from the very beginning, they were able to pull the left over to the center uh, and to the center to the right. And now we have a situation where people say they're running in the center, but in point of fact, they're on the right. And so what we need to do is to pull that back to where it used to be and then so when a person says I'm running as a center, it really is a center. But right now, and what I credit uh, Bernie with is taking this 
this litany of issues that, that are really all in the best interest of the American people, taking these issues and put them in the forefront uh, of the debate. And uh, there's nobody that really holds a candle to him other than Tulsi. And, and I hope that Bernie would select her as his vice president because she would shore up his area in military affairs and foreign policy. So but when Bernie you're, is just excellent on the issue. When you're talking about Bernie selecting a running mate, it sounds like you don't think you're going to be up there. <laughs> and you never, so, never know. I'm, I'm flexible. If I do get up there, uh, I'm good for a couple, three years. <laughs> but, but I think I'm more good for vice president than president or in some capacity where they would endorse the ability to make the people of the United States members of a legislature where people can make laws. Right now, the, the, there's a monopoly on lawmaking, and that's with our elected officials. And that's as a result of the Constitution. And on Election Day, they give their power away to these people. So what exactly is your end goal here? Why did you throw your hat in the ring? And what happens if you don't make the debate stage? Well, we'll have alternative ways of dealing with this. We did we did this to some degree in the 08 cycle, and that is where I would uh, be on a stage, and we would monitor the debates, and then I would uh, pause we would pause the debates, and I would comment on these people. Well, we're probably going to do something like that in, in in this debate if I'm not in, but we'll keep on trying to get into the debates. Well, I think there's a chance we could be in the July debates. Uh, and But here, too, there's more benefit to the running and to the exposition that takes place of the running than actually the six minutes that you'd have on stage. What can you get across in a meaningful way in that short period of time? It's, well, it's a way to showcase the, the composure of candidates, mm -hmm. not, not necessarily what they truly believe. All right, Mike Gravel, we really appreciate your time and coming to see us. Thank you so much. Thank you.